Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we are doing a Dollar Tree pumpkin haul. So as you can see here, I have picked up several different types of pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to show you how to upcycle them and make them more preferable for your home decor. We're going to begin with the glittery smaller pumpkins down here. To begin with any of their signs or plaques that have glitter on them, you're going to want to scrape the glitter off. Some people say to just sand it, which is fine, but it's a lot more messy if you do it that way. So I like to just use this paint scraper to scrape the glitter off of it. And then once it's done with that step, dump the glitter in the trash and then go ahead and do my sanding. I also am going to be removing the ribbons that are already placed on here. I am just not a fan of these ribbons. I think they look cheaply made and the whole point of flipping these items is to make them look like they did not come from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to do this with all four of these pumpkins and then I'm going to take two of them, one of each color, and remove the stems. Now, the stems are in there pretty good. They're just hot glued in, so you can get them out. However, you do need to kind of wiggle it around a little bit. What I did was push my thumb um, in every direction on it and then wiggled it, and then it popped out. Some are easier to come out than others, but just give it a little muscle and you shouldn't have a problem. And then you only want to do this for one color each. After this, I turned it over and removed the stickers from the back. You want to make sure that it's nice and clean on both sides because you're going to be using the entire block. It's not just going to be a forward-facing um, pumpkin. It's going to be a 3D pumpkin by the time we are done with it. Now, the two blocks that you have removed, excuse me, that you have removed the stem from, you're going to measure the midway point and then get yourself a good guideline because you are going to cut it in half. After you have cut it in half, you can use whatever tools you have available to you. Um, I have multiple different types of saws, so this is probably easier for me than most, but get it cut in half as cleanly as you can and sand off any rough spots that you may have. And then we're going to put these together. I'm going to take the two sides that match the colors of the one that's still full and I'm going to use E6000 and hot glue to adhere them. You want to try to make it as centered as possible and you also want to make sure that the holes from the stem are towards the bottom so that you do not see them from the top of the pumpkin. So take your E6000 and put that on first and then put a good amount of hot glue but not too much to where it will spread out of the sides when you adhere it. And then just push it and hold it in place um, center into the side of the full piece. You're going to repeat that step with the other side of it. Try to make it line up as well as possible because you want it to um, cross perpendicularly and be pretty be pretty straight. You're going to do that with both of them and then just give it a little bit of time to set. Once you are done with that, you can paint it whatever colors you want. I am going to be using white chalk paint to cover it all. I'm going to make sure I get into the grooves um, or the gaps that are in there to kind of make it look a little more seamless. Um, I am not going to worry about painting on the stem at all because I plan to cover it completely. However, if you're not going to be covering the stem, you might want to tape it or just be a little extra careful around it. That way you're not getting paint all over it. Once that has dried really well, I took some really fine sandpaper and I sanded down the edges just to slightly distress it and let a little bit of that color come back through from the original pumpkin colors um, and then I was ready to move on to adding a little bit of decoration. 
I apologize. First, I needed to go ahead and seal in that chalk paint. If you're using chalk paint, you do need to seal it. If it's acrylic or something else, you don't need to worry about this step. Um, chalk paint has to be sealed. I did this using some clear wax from Waverly. You just put it on a good rag or paper towel, something that's not gonna leave um, fibers behind, and you just wipe it on and then you wipe any excess off. It gives it a really nice smooth finish and fills, takes away all the chalky feel to it and makes it look really nice. And then we can move on to decorating. I picked up some of this wired jute from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use that to wrap the stem. Now I'm going to take like three or four inches of it and twist it around my finger to give it a good curl. And then I'm going to place it and hot glue it at the base of the stem and then run a line of hot glue up the stem and completely wrap it all the way to the top. Cover the entire top and then wrap it a little bit back down and then curl the other side. This should be nice and secured by the time you're done and it'll have these cute little ringlet curls to go with it and you can leave it and stop here you can add more floral you can add um, some greenery whatever that you want to i happen to have some of these wired like little red beads or berries i guess um, that i'm going to add to this i did not get them from dollar tree however i do know they sell them so if you are lucky enough to find those, grab you some and you can do the same. Um, I just did the same thing. I hot glued them around just the base of it and then twisted them to where they stay on and then twisted it around my finger and called it a day. I think these turned out super cute. I don't think that you can tell, you know, that this is a Dollar Tree buy and I hope that you guys can give it a try. If you do, let me know. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this craft and now we can move on to the next one. Up next we have one of the thankful and blessed pumpkin signs that you can get from the Dollar Tree. Now they also sell um, pumpkin um, little, I don't know, they're just blank pumpkins that you can also use for this project. My Dollar Tree did not have any of those available, so I am just going to be using this sign. I did the same exact steps as you saw before. I scraped off as much of the glitter with my window scraper and then I sanded it all down. And then I'm also going to be removing the leaf and the bow that was already on there. Um, I am careful with the leaves. I'm not sure if I'll end up using them for another project, but I keep any scraps like that just in case and then just use your scraper to go ahead and scrape off any of the hot glue that's left over and sand it down and then you'll have yourself a good template to turn into something else um, i did take out the the jute that is used to hang it and i kept it because i do plan on reusing that i just needed it off um, to get started with this i picked up this cute leaf fall piece of scrapbook paper. I think I got it from Michaels, but you can get wherever you get your scrapbook paper from. It's, I think I paid 70 cents for this one. And I'm using the Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge because I want to make sure that this is weatherproofed if someone decides to use this for on their door that is not covered. You see me adding water to my Mod Podge. I do this because Mod Podge is super thick and it has that really glue texture to it and you can typically see all of your line uh, brush, brush apologize um, you can typically see all of your brush strokes and things in it and I did not want those to show through in my end project so when I'm putting down my base coat which if you don't use Mod Podge you you go ahead and layer it on whatever you're applying your paper or whatever you're Mod Podging on down and the bottom coat doesn't matter as much as the top so I put that layer on. I'm gonna lay my paper down over top of it. Because the sign is 12 inches wide and the paper is a 12 by 12, I had to be very careful when placing it down to make sure it reached both edges. And then you're gonna want to make sure that you flatten it out and get any of the wrinkles out with whatever tool you have available. I have a um, this tool from my Cricut. I know a lot of people use rollers to get it nice and flat. You just wanna be careful. I wasn't as careful as I should have been, but it's gonna work out for what I'm using. So you wanna get it on there nice and flat, 
And then after that, you're going to put your top layer on. And you can see the brush strokes starting to happen, but I will work those back out to where they go away and you can't see them very very easily for the naked eye after it dries. And that's what adding the water to the Mod Podge does. Now, I have not personally had any issues with the Mod Podge not working properly because I diluted it. So this works for me. If you want to try it, that's awesome. However, just know I haven't had issues, but I'm not a professional on in this matter. So do it at your own risk. So after I put that down, which you could have done this step before, I went ahead and trimmed my paper down. And I am going to just try to get my edges really glued down and then um, just carefully tear all of this away so that I, it can really set. And then once it's dry, I'm going to come back in and trim the edges again. So after it dries, it'll kind of stiffen back up and it'll make it a little bit easier to cut. If you do it when it's wet, it rips very easily. So you just want to be aware of that. I'm not saying that you can't because I, I've i done it both ways. You just want to be careful that you're not ripping your paper or whatever you're using to Mod Podge down. So after it's dried, I trimmed all of the excess away. I just used my little... Um, box cutter that I have but you can use an exacto knife you can use scissors but um, to get really close to the edges you might need something a little little easier to maneuver and then after you trim it down you're gonna want to go retouch all of your edges to make sure that they're nice and sealed and that they're gonna have it adhered to the sign really well from there I wanted to give it a nice little detail by adding some rope to trace around the pumpkin. Now, I did not get this rope from the Dollar Tree. However, I know that they have rope options and other um, jute and twine options there. So you can pick up whatever you need. Um, if you use <clears throat> the smaller jute, you can always double it up or add more, you know, like more layers if you want it to look a little thicker. Um, I happen to have this rope on hand, so that's what I wanted to use. If you see on my fingers, I have those pink thimble things. They're like silicone thimbles. I got those from the Dollar Tree, and let me tell you, they are amazing. I highly recommend them. They have saved my finger pads so much heartache from being burnt off from the hot glue. Um, I also use them whenever I use like any type of super glue, and the glue does not get all over my hands, and it cleans right off of them. So highly recommend them if you come across them. All right, so I'm just using hot glue. I'm running a bead of it along my edge. I am placing the rope on top of it nice and carefully to meet the edge to give it a really clean finished look. You see me cut it off here because I want the middle piece to be one continuous loop. I'm going to come around the bottom and then up through the middle of the pumpkin and back down because I want to give it that pumpkin shape back. That way it looks a little bit more dimensional and not just flat. Once I'm done with that, you can add wording by picking up any of their pre-made words and things that they have at the Dollar Tree. They do typically have a lot of options. However, I do have a Cricut, so I'm going to make my own wording. I just wanted to do a simple hello fall, and I'm just going to paint, or sorry, I'm going to create it, and then I printed it out on heavy chipboard, and then after that, I painted it with a color that I'm using for some other pumpkins that I'm already doing in this video and it happens to match some of the leaves in the background really well and I am loving how this sign is turning out. I think it's super cute. It was pretty easy to do so I hope that you guys give this a shot. Let me know what you think about it. Um, super super cute. Now to apply the chipboard, because the rope does elevate the sign, you know, the word signs that I'm adding onto this, I made a little cheat hack. So what I did is I saw how I wanted it to be angled and placed down onto my pumpkin, and then I figured out what spots needed to be glued down, and then I cut rope to put underneath it to make it match up and be the same height that way it would sit flat but still have that good 3d effect and I just hot glued it on um, I also sorry I skipped this part I also did this 
the stem in this rope as well. I did it long ways to come up and around because a stem would typically, you know, go up, not horizontally. It's more vertical with the lines. So I just wanted to kind of mimic that look and finish off the top of that to kind of make it complete. And then after I've added my Hello Fall, I got that painted. Um, I also um, covered that with the Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge that takes 28 days to cure, but after that it should be safe just in case it does happen to get wet, which I typically try to suggest that people have a covered porch or you know, some type of protection with anything that they're hanging on their door. And then just to kind of top it all off, I used a safety, not a safety pin, I used a paper clip and I poked the holes through the pre-made holes where the hanging rope was originally and I just poked that back through and then I made a little bow that would match. Now this ribbon came from Dollar Tree. I'm pretty sure they have it out there all year round, um, but I've had this in my drawer for a while so I'm really not sure. But it matches absolutely perfectly, so I am going to make a little bow. Now, I'm going to kind of tell you guys how to make a cheat bow in case you're not comfortable with making them or not really sure how. An easy way to do this is to figure out how wide you want your bow to be. And you're going to make a loop and hot glue the two ends together. And then you're going to make a tail for that by taking another piece of ribbon, you're gonna, however long you want the tail, you're gonna fold it over and make a second one, cut it off, and then you'll hot glue it together and just hot glue it to the back. Now, you'll have a loop and a little, um, like tails coming off, and you need to kind of make it together and cinch the middle down to give it that bow look. All you're gonna do is cut another piece, wrap it around the center and hot glue it in the back to where it's nice and tight, and cinch down and then you have yourself a cute little bow it takes no time at all and it's a really easy hack on how to make a cute bow without having to do anything fancy or you know moving your fingers around a certain way and hold your breath so it doesn't come undone um, so yeah I love the way this door hanger came out let me know in the comments how you feel about it and let's move on to the next ones all right, I picked these pumpkins up from the Dollar Tree as well, obviously, and I did not care about the letters on the front because I knew I wanted to paint them and make something my own. So I went ahead again and removed the ribbons and the stickers from these. Um, there was no hot glue or anything really left on them, so they were primed and ready to go, and I'm going to paint them up. My plan is to make little groupings of pumpkins and just kind of spice them up a little bit and make them really cute self sitters or sorry shelf sitters or like tiered tray decorations and I'm going to be using chalk paint. Surprise surprise. I have three different colors I want to use. One is by Folk Art and it's called Sage and it's just this really pretty green. The other is the white chalk paint that I've been using. And then the third is just a dark gray um, color as well. And I'm just gonna paint these up. I did do multiple coats because I wanted to cover those letters really well. I do apologize about the camera angle. I must have bumped my stand and I was so into the project I didn't notice. But that's okay, you can still see what I'm doing. I believe it took three coats just for good measure to cover these pumpkins completely. Um, to really make those letters go away, you could, you know, on the ones with the black letters, you could paint the entire pumpkin black just to have a complete base. Um, and then vice versa with the ones with the white letters, you could paint it all white just so it all blends together. I'm not worried about it, so I'm just going in and starting. You'll see that I am watering down my chalk paint just a little bit. I only do this to kind of make it slide and adhere um, really well. It just gives it, you know, less brush strokes and look a little more complete. Um, it's not as thick, so it doesn't cover as much. I could probably get away with two coats with it just at full force. But again, I like the way it paints on when it's got that little bit of water in there to help it move around and spread. So I get these all painted up 
and then we're going to sand them down very, very lightly. I just want just the, the smallest amount of distress on these pumpkins. I'm using a very fine grit piece of sandpaper and I'm just gonna hit all those edges and the fronts of them just to smooth them out. Let that texture and detail from the pumpkins come through, but without taking it back down to where you can see a lot of those base colors or the letters on the front. Once that part is done, I'm gonna kind of lay them out and figure out how I want them to look once they're attached, like how I want the bundle to look. And then I'm going to be using E6000 and hot glue once again to adhere them to each other. I apologize. I also did do a white wax on these. Um, the Waverly white wax is actually more of a cream color, which is fine because that's, I feel like more fall than a bright white. So I just take that and I brush it on with a, it's actually a stencil brush, but it can be used as a wax brush. And then you just wanna wipe off any of the excess. Now, the longer you let the wax sit on your item, the more it will stay and it just gives different effects. For this, I wiped it off immediately because I just wanted it to dull those colors a little bit, kind of get in the grooves, but not necessarily stick to the entire item. So again, I just brush it on and then I take my rag and I wipe it back off. It just gives it a muted look to it. It gets down in those grooves a little bit and I think it turned out super cute. And originally I was going to use the clear wax on the white pumpkins, however, with it being fall, I decided I didn't want that bright white, so I went ahead and hit those with the white wax as well. It turned them this pretty cream color, which I think is perfect and matches these other colors very well, so that we could move on. Now, I didn't show it in the video, but I always paint the backs of my, well, not always. If the back looks good and professional, I'll leave it. However, the backs of these, I went ahead and painted them the same color because you know, some of them are orange, some of them are white. I wanted it to match and look like it was done professionally. So I painted the back of them as well and went ahead and waxed them and the bottom. This is optional, obviously. However, I do believe taking these extra steps will make you stand out in the crowd, um, show that you care and that you look at the entire project and all of the detail. Um, again, the whole point is to make it look like it did not come from Dollar Tree and the more effort and details you put into it, the better it will look. So moving forward, I digress. I'm just going to wax it all, wipe it all off, and then um, apply them together. And then to add my little detail to it, I just have some jupe from the Dollar Tree. You can get the rolls of it. I have that that I'm just going to hot glue around. So I just put a bead of hot glue on, I wrapped it around, and then after the hot glue was set, I tied a little knot and I just left the strings kind of however they landed. I didn't tie them in a bow or anything. I just let them be a little more whimsical. And then I also attached a couple eucalyptus leaves that I have. Um, I picked this up from Walmart a while ago. You can use any greenery or florals that you have. Um, make it your own. That's the fun part about DIYs is that you can make it fit whatever your style is. So I just put a bead of hot glue on the eucalyptus, put that down, wrap the twine around, tied that on, and just let it be what it was going to be. I think they turned out super cute and super natural and neutral and will look good on anybody's shelf. So again, in the comments, let me know how you feel about this one. Is it something that you'll give a try? Is there something you would have done differently? I love to hear from you guys. So we can go ahead and move forward. So if you were paying attention at the beginning, I had two little star foam pumpkins sitting in the picture as well. Um, I planned on wrapping those with yarn. I did think that they were hollow and they were not. And I did not feel like moving forward with that project just because I didn't want to do anything else with them. Um, my plan was to cut off the top and the bottom. It was should have if I, if it were hollow, I was just gonna wrap the yarn through. It was gonna be a super cute thing that I could just set on my shelf. However, 
that didn't work out. Now there are so many ways that you could do these pumpkins. I just personally didn't want to. So you could just simply paint them. You can cut out the top. You can put floral and greenery and things in them and use them as a little plant holder. You can stack them. You can do so many things. Take old sweaters or like different fabrics and cover them. So many ways you can make these super cute. I apologize. I wasn't feeling that project, so I didn't move forward with it. But if you do, I would love to hear what you do with the foam pumpkins. Um, let me know. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I am going to include a couple pictures of the concrete pumpkins that I did in a previous video. Basically, they had these concrete pumpkins at Dollar Tree. I picked up a several different styles of them, and then I painted them up with my paints. I waxed them and I added some jute and greenery to those as well and they turned out super cute. So I did those and then the same pumpkin sign that I did in this video, I made a reversible door hanger with. I did Happy Halloween on one side with a detachable bow. That way it would sit flat if it were turned to the other side, which is Hello Fall again. Um, so super cute, turned out great. So many different ways that you can take these Dollar Tree items and turn them into something more. So I hope you guys give it a try. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or I missed anything that went on in the video, please just leave me a comment below. I'm happy to help you out with whatever I did or to clarify anything. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Please consider subscribing to my channel and give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.